Hi everyone, so this is chapter 16. Um, this uh, involves circular motion. Um, the idea behind this chapter is even though it's a very small chapter, we actually will use all mo a lot of the concept in this chapter when it comes to uh, objects that travel at constant speed in circles. Uh, so for example, uh, planets, uh, motion or um, par charged particles in the magnetic field and um, it's actually quite linked to mechanics as well. Um, you're all aware about uh, using degrees as a means of measuring angle uh, which we will be looking at uh, in this topic as well uh, but we will be instead of using degrees from now on we'll be using radians when it comes to circular motion uh, we know that there are about 360 degrees in a uh, circle. Um, however, um, this is not based on anything scientific. It's uh, actually mostly linked, people say that it's mostly linked to the fact that we have 365 days in a year and it makes it simpler to understand by using 360 degrees. Uh, but that's not the base unit. Um, so we'll be using uh, radians instead as, a, as an SI unit for the angle. Okay, so the first things that we will have a look at is what the radian is uh, and uh, define it. You need to know the definition as well and how to use it, how to convert between degrees and radians. Uh, we'll talk about what we mean by period and frequency of an object and the angular velocity. This is a bit different than what you're used to normal velocity and we'll explain that as well. So these are the first three points that we'll talk about. Okay, so what is the radian? A radian is the angle subtended by a circular arc with a length equal to the uh, radius of the circle. So what you see here, this is the radian, the alpha, uh, that's the angle, one radian. If the radius here, the this radius and this radius, are equal to this uh, arc length. So if the arc length basically is equal to the radius, then the angle subtended between the two uh, lines that extend to the arc um, will be um, at one radian. Um, one radian is about, in degrees, it's about 57.3 uh, degrees uh, for any circle, because it's the same for every single one. In a full circle, you have about two pi radians. So um, the whole angle here, so all of this is two pi radians. So we won't be using it as degrees, we're going to be using it as what each um, angle comes as uh, in terms of radians. So if we go back to the definition, we'll see that the angle in radians, any angle in radians, um, can be given by the arc length divided by the radius. So in other words, the arc length that we're looking at divided by the radius. So if I was looking for this angle in radians, then I will have to take the arc length between that point and that point and divide it by the radius. Now, if we're talking about a whole circle, then the whole circle around, we know that the arc length is actually two pi r. That's how we calculate the circumference of a circle. And if we divide it by the radius, then we end up with 2 pi. So the angle the um, angle in radians of a so whole circle is 2 pi, and we know that that's actually equal to 360 degrees. Um, so if I, want, if I want to simplify this, pi, so pi radians, and this is, uh, when we talk about pi, it's not exactly the same thing as, um, if we, when we talk about radians, it's not exactly the same thing as, uh, uh, pi as 3.414 and so on. Uh, but anyway, so, so pi radians is equal to 180 degrees. And like I said before, one radian is about 57.3 degrees, uh, roughly. Now if we consider uh, 2 pi to be 360 degrees, I just wanted to complete uh, the understanding of this. Uh, 2 times 3.14 is about 6.28 radians. So it's about 6.3 radians if we um, round that. 
Um, so if you do 6.3 times 57.3, you get roughly 360.99 degrees. So it's, it, it's, a, it's a good approximation. If you consider that, um, you know, you have 6.3 radians in one circle, um, and you have 360 degrees in one circle, if you divide one by the other, so 360 degrees divided by 6.3, gives you 57.1 uh, four, so roughly 57 degrees per radian. So if I wanted to convert uh, from, uh, for example, from degrees to radians, so if I wanted to degrees to radians, I'll have to uh, multiply um, my value, my uh, degrees by uh, degrees to radians, you times by pi and divide by 180. Uh, so that would uh, make it a little bit more simpler to uh, convert. So I'll do a little example here. If I want to convert 45 degrees into uh, radians, I will multiply it by pi and I will divide it by 180. Uh, so that will give me uh, about... Four 0.25 pi or a quarter pi, pi over 4. It's the same thing. So another example we could have is if we had, for example, a spinning top that completed eight uh, full revolutions um, before coming to a stop. Uh, then if we needed to express the angle, so eight full revolutions means it went around eight times uh um two pi in a circle so that's um that's the 16 pi radians or if you want to express in degrees that's eight times 360 degrees um, so it's just about expressing it um in terms of the angles it moves through in degrees or uh, radians um so when you talk about a full revolution you should know what it means in that way um some other key terms i will be using is the period and frequency. So a um, period is the time it takes in seconds, is very important, uh, for an object to travel a full circle. So we talk about a period of uh, an object moving in a circular motion. It means how long it took it to uh, go in a full uh, circle, in a full revolution. Um, when we talk about the frequencies, the number of full circles completed in one second. Um, so the, we already know how these two values are related from waves, chapters um, 10 and, no, it's 11 and 12, I think, chapters 11 and 12. So it's 1 over t. Frequency is always expressed in hertz and uh, period is always expressed in seconds. So that means that hertz, basically the unit of frequency, is the same thing as uh, per second. And the other thing that we will describe is the angular uh, velocity. Now, the angular velocity um, of an object moving in a circle is the rate of change of angle. Um, you're used to seeing uh, speed or velocity. Um, in that case, we always said that it's the distance covered per unit time or the uh, rate of um, you know, uh, distance covered. Um, so this is a very important part. Um, we know that speed, so in this case, uh, angular velocity has a symbol omega, just to uh, make sure that we remember that, a lowercase omega, is the angle, the rate of change of angle, so the angle covered per unit time, whereas speed or velocity we saw as the distance covered per unit time. Do not mix these two. Angular velocity has to do with the angle covered per unit time, whereas speed has to do with the distance covered per unit time. Um, theta should be expressed in radians. So the unit is radians, time in uh, seconds, and uh, omega is radians per second. So we have a look at how long it takes, for example, um, for the 
time it takes to complete one complete a uh, full circle or circular revolution it takes it time t we said we already defined it so period is a time taken for an object to travel a full circle and we know that a full circle is two pi radians so having omega is theta over t theta could be the two pi because we're talking about how long it will take for it to complete a full uh, um, revolution so a complete a full circle to travel full circle divided by the period uh, so you will see that omega is two pi over t or we already know that uh, f frequency is one over t so we can express it as two pi f so these are the forms that you will end up using mostly as part of the equation these equations are actually given to you um, this this one is not given to you as uh, an equation in the book, but you should know. Um, just compare it to the uh, speed equation, but instead of having a speed, you have angular velocity. Instead of having distance, you have angle. Um, the other equation, I think, uh, frequency one, is given to you in part of waves. So this one is given to you in the waves section of the formula booklet. So you already, already know that one. It's a good point to mention here that you might see angular velocity expressed as uh, degrees per second or revolutions per second or revolutions per minute. Um, but um, for our course, we need to use radians per second at all times. So you might need to convert uh, between revolutions per second to angles, per, uh, to radians per second or even degrees per second to uh, radians per second. Um, just remember that one revolution means uh, one complete circle, so that's two pi radians. Okay, so far we've talked about the radian as a measure of angle. Um, we've talked about period and frequency of an object in circular motion and the angular velocity. Um, now we're going to talk about um, how if you are moving in a circular uh, motion, you have a constant uh, net force perpendicular um, to the velocity. It's a very important part of this topic. Um, how to cal calculate that constant speed in a circle um, and the acceleration, centripetal acceleration, centripetal force. Uh, and we'll leave that for last. So to understand the next parts that we're going to talk about, um, we need to understand what goes on when objects move around in a circle. Uh, when you have objects uh, moving around the circle, let's say a car going around the roundabout. So let's say this is the roundabout and a, a car is just simply traveling around the roundabout. Now the speed of the car, even let's say this car is traveling at a constant speed. Let's say 20 miles per hour. Um, when it's at that point of the circle, the uh, velocity of the car is pointing in this direction. But when the car comes at this point of the circular motion, the velocity is pointing at this direction. And it goes on and on. So obviously it's traveling in a circle, but the speed, uh, even though the speed is constant, the direction of the velocity is constantly uh, changing. You can see it from the arrows here. So at every single point that the car is traveling, the velocity is pointing at a different direction. And we already know that acceleration is the rate of change in velocity. So if the velocity is changing, so the direction of the object is a good point to remind you that speed is different to velocity in terms that velocity is speed with direction so even though the speed part of the um, velocity stays the same the direction doesn't uh, and since the direction doesn't uh, uh, stay the same that means that the object is actually accelerating so the car is accelerating but the acceleration is not in the same direction as the velocity in circular motion, this is the most important part to understand that even though you have constant speed, so it's 20 miles per hour here, 20 miles per hour there, the direction of the velocity is constantly changing. So that's the uh, biggest part to understand. 
From there on, uh, we can uh, discuss what happens to the acceleration. So you also know that any uh, object that accelerates or a person that accelerates uh, does require a resultant force, right? So we know that F is equal to MA. Uh, so if we have acceleration, we also have a resultant force. Um, but in terms of um, circular motion, we call this force, this resultant force, uh, centripetal. This comes from Greek, it just means a uh, center seeking force, meaning that uh, the force always points towards uh, the center. Is it? Centripetal force is not something that's um, a real force, it's a, it's a resultant force. So it's a nickname, so you know how we call weight or um, friction or air resistance and so on. Um, this is not part of those forces, this is just the resultant force uh, when it comes to circular motion and it's always towards uh, facing towards the center. So while the car is there, it has a resultant force which we call centripetal force acting towards the center. So it has the driving force forward, um, it has uh, frictional forces against the wheels in this direction and that adds up and gives it the um, centripetal force towards the center. I'll go into it a little bit more uh, in a second. But the idea is that you have a center seeking force towards the center, which means the acceleration is always uh, towards, towards the center. And it's 90 degrees, so if the velocity is in this direction, then the acceleration is 90 degrees or perpendicular to the velocity, which means that no work is done on the object. And the fact that there is no work done since the velocity and acceleration or even force are, are since they're perpendicular, that means there is no um, work done on the object, which means that it goes at a constant speed, it can continue traveling at a constant speed. Just to remind you here as well that in order to have work done is equal to the force times the distance moved and you also have um, in the formula booklet you're given the equation i believe let me quickly check it was part of the mechanics uh, part that you've done um so yeah you're given it where this says work energy and power in module three of the formula booklet it gives you fx cos theta so in order to have work done on an object the force times the distance uh, in a specific angle. And in this case, since the angle is 90, cos 90 is uh, zero, so work done is zero. So if there is no increase uh, of uh, energy or uh, given to the system or decrease in the energy given to the system, then the body will continue to uh, move at a constant speed. So this is another very, very important part that usually does get tested in tests and exams. I'll give you another example before I move on. So if we're talking about, uh, let's say, how the Earth orbits around the Sun. Let's assume that the whole path is uh, fully circular and not elliptical, uh, which we will be doing in Chapter 18 anyway. Uh, there is only one force acting on the Earth, um, and that's that gravitational attraction uh, of... Uh, the Earth uh, from the Sun because the Sun is much uh, bigger. Um, so what you have is the Earth moving at a constant speed at each point. And uh, the force provided by the gravitational attraction is actually the centripetal force. And you have that at each point. So there will always be 90 degrees to each other, which will mean that the speed of uh, the Earth doesn't get affected. So I hope you get the point. And it's always pointed towards the center of the uh, circular path. So please make sure that your arrows are drawn properly uh, around it. Okay, so here uh, we have a simple definition for what a centripetal force is. 
is simply the net force which acts perpendicular to the direction of velocity and always towards the center of the circle. Um, net means overall or resultant force and we're going to deal with uh, how linear velocity uh, or speed is related to uh, the angular velocities. It's a very nice part of the thing that we have to deal with. So we know that uh, velocity, oh, we know that velocity is given by distance divided by time. Uh, in this case, if we're talking about the distance covered um, uh, as a circle, as a circular path, you still know that the circumference of, of a circle is 2 pi r, and we know that the time period for that to be covered is uh, given by capital T. Um, we already defined omega as 2 pi over capital T. So you can see here that 2 pi over T is the same thing as omega. So omega uh, can be replaced there. So V is equal to omega R. This is a very important equation that links linear velocity to angular velocity. So you can see that if you're looking at a, um, a disc spinning, a CD disc, I don't know if you still know what those are. So if we look at this point here, let's say this is a half a radius of the circle, um, you will have lower linear velocity. But if you go to this point, since the radius is bigger at that point, so that's r, that's half r. Uh, so the higher the radius, uh, the bigger the radius, the bigger the linear velocity, even though omega is always constant. So that means that linear velocity is directly proportional to the radius of the circle. And you can also think about it in terms of the fact that uh, this point here of the circle will be uh, covering more distance uh, compared to this point here in the same amount of time. But since they're all, all these points are spinning uh, through two pi radians, at the same time, the angular velocity stays the same. And um, then equally, we can uh, now link um, acceleration to angular velocity. And we call this actually a uh, centripetal um, acceleration uh, since uh, it's always uh, towards the center of um, the circle. Uh, now it depends on the speed of the object, we know that, and the radius of the circular path. Um, you don't have to prove uh, the equation, um, but you should be able to uh, change it. So a is equal to v squared over r, and you should be able to show how this can be rewritten as omega squared r. So uh, we know, we already said that v is equal to omega r uh, at the top. Uh, so I will simply replace v with omega r. a is omega r squared over r, which is omega squared r squared over r. This cancel and we're left with omega squared r. So there are two expressions of a calculated accelerate, a centripetal acceleration, depending on whether we're given the um, uh, linear velocity or the angular velocity, and obviously they relate the radius uh, with both of them. And they're both given to you as well in the formula booklet. Um, if you do want to know how to derive this equation, I can do that in class, or, or you can ask me to make another video of it. Um, I don't mind, personally. Um, but then we will come to how this is linked to uh, force, so the centripetal force. Uh, so if an object is moving in circular motion, the centripetal acceleration is v squared over r. Uh, F is equal to ma still applies. So I can substitute this equation in there and it will leave me with uh, m v squared over r. Or another expression that I can do is use a is equal to omega squared r. Um, so I have one expression for it, and I, I will replace a in this case with omega squared r, and this is another expression I can uh, use to calculate the centripetal force. So even though um, this topic does seem quite uh, straightforward and easy, 
it does have a lot of skill within it and the most skill that comes with it is to identify what happens with centripetal force so you will have to analyze um, forces acting on an object find the resultant force that is towards the center of motion and then be able to use that force um, I will go through examples in class. Uh, we'll do a lot of examples together before uh, I let you work on your own. But just a quick summary. We have spoken about the um, constant overall force, net perpendicular to the velocity of an object. We talked about uh, how you can get the constant speed in a circle or constant, ve well, the velocity value. Um, talked about centripetal acceleration. If you want me, I said, I already said, if you want me to prove... Uh, this equation let me know in class and we also showed how to get to these two equations uh, but the even though it's a very short chapter and it appears easy uh, there's a lot of analysis when it comes to centripetal forces and how to get to that point hope you find it useful and uh, let me know if you have any questions